All right, let's get to it. Versions refer to the versions of grading that you can apply to any single clip. These are really useful if you want to play around with different grades, but not delete or remove your previous attempts. Inside of it, you'll find a column of 10 possible labels with a few presets already available to you. If you don't select any of these, then you can just type directly into them. There's not too many audio options. Uh, do keep in mind this is an editing and grading software and not an audio mixing one. You do have the option to simply enable or disable your audio. You're also able to indicate on your meter levels what would be a high and a low range. And another useful option is the fact that you're able to realign your levels based on certain regional standards. I know that on certain projects I've previously worked on, I've had to redraw the decibels from 0 to negative 20 to allow for appropriate mixing. The general options give you interface and operational controls throughout the program. At the top, you have the option to open up your last working project as soon as you log in. This can be really convenient if you more or less only work on one project at a time. Down here, you can choose the quality at which your frames will be cached. Based on your original bit depth, you can choose between the uncompressed codecs or for a smaller file size but still high visual quality, go for one of the DNxHD compressions, which are listed from lightest to heaviest compression, top to bottom. Once a clip has been inactive for a certain period of time, you can choose to have it cached. In this case, it will happen within 5 seconds. You can choose to delay this if you don't need it that often, but you will be eating up more processing power and filling up your cache if you make this any more frequent. Optimized media refers to what we think of as proxy workflows. There will be a dedicated tutorial on this topic later on, but the gist of it is that you'll be creating duplicates of all your media in order to lighten the load on your workstation. The settings you see here allow you to establish the resolution and codec of the optimized media. The user interface settings give you the ability to turn on or off certain behaviors of the program. They're mostly superficial, but could aid in improving system performance. The last thing inside the general options could arguably be the most useful to you. So here we're specifying where our cache files and our gallery stills are going to end up once they're generated. Every time you press play and you start to play the video forward and you've applied any changes to your clips like color grading or VFX compositing, etc., the program first has to apply a render to this footage before showing it back to you. So what you're watching isn't really several layers playing simultaneously. As far as the computer is concerned, it's outputting just one video file to you. And since it's playing something that's been changed since the original video, it's essentially playing back a new piece of media. So this new piece of media is being generated and it needs to be placed somewhere, uh, temporarily at least. And that will be a cache location. And in this case, it's sending it to a dedicated uh, cache clip inside of my uh, DaVinci Resolve uh, media folder. And Underneath that, we also have our gallery stills, uh, which we're going to be going over in a lot of detail during the color page tutorials. But these are the still images that also carry the print of the grading information and node structure inside of them. They're a lot smaller than these video files, but they still take up significant space. If I was working on a big project, I would start running out of space very, very quickly. Instead of sending all of these files and stills to my C drive, what I might be interested in doing is sending them all to a dedicated external drive or even to a RAID. That way, my computer's drive is still available for other processes, uh, the playback might be a bit smoother, and then I won't have to clean out my cache as frequently. So if you are worried about uh, a lot of the space on your computer being eaten up very suddenly and very quickly, uh, you might want to click on Browse and pick a different place to send all of this media to. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next one, we're looking at the remaining five settings for capture and playback, control panels, autosave, keyboard mapping, and metadata. Uh, so I'll see you then. Thank you very much for watching.